Hello, it is the Nisha Jackson Show. We sure appreciate you being here. She's Nisha. Hi. Hi. Uh, by the way, if you are feeling sluggish, if you're trying to make yourself better, you want to lose weight, you can't sleep, all kinds of things out there. Uh, you've Maybe you heard you've got Hashimoto's disease or maybe you've got uh, fibromyalgia or something. You're just, nothing's, it's, you don't feel right. Do yourself a favor and go to nishajackson.com, nishajackson.com. Find out how this brilliant woman can help you uh, feel better and have a better, more fulfilling life. Okay? NishaJackson.com. What are we you. talking about today? Thank you for that. You're welcome. Because that is important. It is. Because I think sometimes we're talking about overthinking is toxic, right? And sometimes I think people overthink stuff because they're not, I know this sounds nutty, but it, they're not hormonally balanced. Their brain's not functioning right. They're too emotional. They're rolling around in negativity. Sometimes that can be that they just don't feel well. And so I think what you just said is a really good idea is if you at least get my book, Brilliant Burnout, because Brilliant Burnout talks about what you should have tested. And if you're relating to a lot of the topics that we address on these podcasts, and hopefully you're listening to every single one of them. Yes. <laughs> if you can relate to those topics, then I would just really encourage you to, at the very minimum, get my book, read it, and identify with what tests should be ordered at your medical office. If you, can't, if you can't get them at your medical office, we can order them for you. We can consult, with, I can consult with you and tell you this is what you need to do and you can still work with your local healthcare professional. And, and you can do that from anywhere in the country of the world. I've, matter of fact, a friend of mine a named Pat uh, got the lab in a box. Uh, he's in Phoenix, Arizona. You're in Oregon and you were able to help him out and he's doing better very yeah, quickly. Exactly. So. Just kind of laying it all out because many medical professionals can order the tests, but they don't know because it's not their area of expertise how to, um, how to interpret them and then let alone figure out what to do. So we can work with your healthcare professional to get that done. And nice. it's really a nice, it's really a nice. Do you doctors feel like if somebody goes to another doctor, like they're cheating on you? Not at all. Cause I, I, feel I that think way we sometimes. should all work together as a team Okay. because that's the best for the patient is to work together as a team. Um, and that's what this process is, is, is really not only educating the patient, this is what you need to do to get balance, to achieve optimal balance. But we can also work with your healthcare professional, your gynecologist, your primary care provider, your family practice person to tell them this is where the person is and this is what we suggest they be on. So if I'm feeling like I'm cheating on my doctor, maybe I'm overthinking things. You're probably having toxic overthinking. Okay. So let's talk, tell me a little bit about overthinking and, and what can we do and what, what is it um, that you maybe would be your definition of overthinking? Right, well, certainly... This whole COVID crisis that we have had, I, I believe this is probably a pretty good example of toxic overthinking. Can we have overthought that whole thing anymore? Yeah. Oh, too much information, too much discussion. Running death counts. Too, too much focus. And, it, and it's not really positive. I mean, it's not really beneficial to us because a lot of it we couldn't do anything about. So the first that I want to just give you some ideas of how you know that your overthinking is toxic, because I think this is one of the things, Rusty, that keeps people from being successful. Hmm, okay. Is overthinking. I mean, think of it, it's kind of like analysis paralysis. Right. They, uh, people will just roll around in, in trying to make a decision and they can't move forward. And I've always said to be successful, I really believe one of the ingredients is to stop overthinking and just start moving forward. Moving forward with, okay, I'm going to start like, okay, let's just say in order to be able to have the job of your dreams, you need to get a certain degree or a certain certification or whatever, or, or surround yourself with certain people. Well, the only way you can do that is not sitting at home wondering if that's the right thing to do is right. just to start, Right. just start. And, and so overthinking, I think, really keeps people from being successful. So the first thing to do if you feel that you're an overthinker, and I, I want to talk about overthinking from a negative standpoint too, but if you're an overthinker, one of the things that, that's really important is just to become aware of it. So if you find yourself overthinking a conversation, mm -hmm with a sister that you had with your sister, your mother, your coworker, and you keep repeating the story over and over again, 
there isn't actually any reason to maybe even state the story at all, hmm. ever. We used to think talk therapy was really important, but the problem right. is, is now we know that repeating the story brings more energy to it. It brings more attraction to it. And this is not woo-woo stuff. This is real. So if you want to get more of the stuff you're worried about and you're overthinking about it, just keep talking about it because it'll just keep coming to you. Mm. Okay. And that would be a drag, wouldn't it? Right, yeah. No, so true. anyway, I think that's one of the things that you can do that makes a big difference is just become aware of your thoughts of overthinking something, whether it be a job change, um, something about your children, it could be uh, your weight, uh, it could be, again, somebody that offended you with their words. Mm. All of those things, it, you got to bring awareness to where your thoughts are. And that, and that could be hard, especially if somebody did you wrong, Right. right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it could take years to stop that. I know. Like if somebody ripped you off millions of dollars, that would be something that would be hard to get over. I understand. Right. It Believe could take me. years to get over it, but it could also take one second. How, like today, how do you do the one second? Today I make the decision. Okay, like I just had a conversation with you in my kitchen. Yeah. And I went and took a shower afterwards and I felt sick to my stomach because it was a very emotionally based conversation and I didn't actually even need to talk about it. I've talked about it enough. I've processed all that stuff. But some reason, I just blurted it all out again. That's not necessary. And I felt okay. sick. Like, I, I don't need to be talking about that over and over and over again. And I actually don't. I really don't. But we got on this subject. And I just, I should have just, like, cut it off. Because that doesn't serve you well to keep talking about something that's from the past mm. and is been processed. And you, you don't need to keep bringing it up. So, so that's so much easier said than done. I know, but I told myself in the shower, I said, okay, that's it. I'm not going to, I don't want to talk about that because it doesn't make me feel well. Mm -hmm. So I think becoming aware of it, just, just saying, you know what? I talked about it. I don't feel good. I don't need to talk about it. So I'm aware of it now. Okay. All right. And then for people who are overthinkers, like you're overthinking things you need to do and you're not making any positive moves. I think you have to ask yourself, and I love this because I, I do this also when I'm trying to make a business decision. What is the worst thing that could happen? Right. I think there's a, a lot of people just go right there, don't they? Yeah, they just go worst case. They, they just go like it actually already happened. Right. So if you can go to, and sometimes this is a good way of making a decision not to do something, is that if worst case scenario could completely bury you, yeah. maybe you don't want to do it. So, but maybe you do. So, so looking at the situation and say, what is the worst thing that could happen? What could possibly go wrong if I were to do this? Instead of taking, and just take the emotion out of it. Just say, here's the worst thing that can happen. Here's the best thing that can happen. Now I can make a decision. Okay. Um, so the other thing you can do if you find yourself mulling around with toxic overthinking is to distract yourself. Okay. A lot of people do retail therapy, go shopping. Uh, yeah, I know that works for me. Yeah. Usually until I get the bill in the mail. <laughs> um, so uh, distract yourself, go outside. I think I, I say this over and over again. I know sound, I sound like a broken record, but being in nature is so forgiving and it's so, it so opens up your mind and it enhances creativity. I think sometimes when I'm, when I'm walking outside and hiking, things come to me that I don't think would come to me if I was powering it out on a piece of equipment in my garage. Huh, okay. So I think getting outside and distracting yourself will stop toxic overthinking right in its tracks. And there's, there's many things that you could do by distracting yourself. You could you know, start learning to play an instrument. You could start learning to do a craft or a hobby. Like I said, you could go outside and, and, and work out. You could dance. Music is a really good way to distract you from toxic overthinking. Or develop a meditation ritual and short meditations where maybe it's just five minutes. Okay. So these are some of the things that I think are really healthy uh, for toxic overthinkers. And we've all kind of become that mm -hmm. in some way because think about all of the information that's constantly coming into our brain. I mean, let's just take social media alone. Okay. Think about all the people that you're, you know, when people like scrolling through, like scrolling through all the posts, really? I mean, think about it. It's kind of nuts when, when we think about how much 
sensory information is coming into our brain. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're also trying to listen to our kid that's talking at the same time, or it's at the dinner table, or it's, it's, we're doing too many things at one time. No wonder we can't think. Yeah. No wonder we can't make a decision, mm -hmm. or we're stuck on, you know, the 17 posts that talk about people being in a lot of pain. Now you're, now you're digesting all of that, all plus right. all of your stuff. So just distracting yourself, I think, is really important and keeping a perspective. How much can you take at any one time? If you feel like you can't get out of toxic overthinking, you're negative all the time, you're, you're, you're gossiping, you're bad-mouthing other people, you're replaying conversations in your head that happened years ago, or if you can't make a positive decision in your life because you're overthinking the outcome, you're just not doing it. If you're not doing those things, get a perspective. I want you just to think about why am I replaying this? Am I getting something from this, even mm -hmm. if it's bad? So these, these are things that I think are important to just identify with. And I, and I speak from the bottom of my heart about this because this is stuff I deal with all of the time and I get it. But in order to be healthy and in order to treat your body well and treat your health well, you have to get a handle on your thoughts and you have to get a handle on toxic overthinking. All right. Well, that's uh, great advice. And another thing you can do to treat your body well is to take Brand X. Uh, Brand X is a great uh, product where it's, oh, yeah, it's a drink. You'll, you pour the, the powder into your, in your bottle and you shake it up and uh, it helps you with energy and focus. And yes. what else? Energy, focus, inflammation, recovery. It's a pre-workout and a post-workout drink. It's good for the, I like it. This is how I like it the best. It, definitely before my workout, but afternoon, about two o'clock in the afternoon, it's perfect to get me till about 9.30 at night when I just collapse. Nice. Well, the other thing we suggest you do, not just that, but go to initiajaxa.com so you can uh, uh, find out more about getting your hormones uh, balanced or feeling better or finding out what problems you have you can't put your finger on what, what the issue is. Uh, that's one thing that her and her team are excellent at. So that's nishajackson.com. And check out this book, Brilliant Burnout, How Successful Driven Women Can Stay in the Game by Rewiring Their Bodies, Their Brains, and Their Hormones. All that and more can find be found at nishajackson.com. Make sure you subscribe to the show. Uh, please subscribe at YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you find us. Uh, share it. Tell your friends. We sure appreciate it. For Nisha Jackson, I'm Rusty Humphreys, and this is... The Nisha Jackson Show.